All right, we got, this is the MV2 solenoid. <coughs> the Sonic zip kit, these little uh, plugs that it came with. It didn't come with enough of them, it came with too many of the large ones. We got uh, five extra of the large ones. They should have all been small. So I'm gonna put the two that I have on the two valves that are really probably more critical because the fluid needs to seal out on this end of the valve. These are stroking from this way. So I'm gonna put them on these two. Um, the Sonic Zip Kit also comes with this uh, little valve right here. Also comes with the uh, end cap for this valve. The uh, Transgo kit also come with one. I'm going to use the Transgo one. Um, Transgo kit comes with this lockup valve. Uh, I think this is the. Uh, I have to look back and see what they called this valve. It came with this valve also, so it's going to replace this one. Um, as far as the other end goes, here's our end plugs for these. There's only four of them. These two are not going to get changed. Actually, I think it's these two not going to get changed out. This is your solenoid for the E-shift that grabs the manual valve right here and keeps it from being able to come out of park and that little uh, cable that you have it, it's got enough force that it actually pull this out of this solenoid when this does not working properly here's what they are all called EDS1, EDS2, 3, 5, 4, MV1, EDS6 and our park lock solenoid. A um, couple of these valves, if I get the other transgo kit, are going to be reamed out. One of them is this valve right here. Another one is on the back. I'm not sure exactly which one, uh, if that kit shows up. So let me start putting this valve body back together so I can get this off my bench. These parts people are really killing me. I just create such a problem. I had a heck of a time getting this one out right here. So we may have to clean this up a little bit. clean this up and uh, figure out what's going on here. See how that did. Not much better. 
So I took my uh, brake hone that I have, hone that out. I've run into quite a few of these that have this uh, clip here broken. This one is sitting in there this way. And this Transgo kit gives you extra clips. So I'm going to put a brand new one there. And uh, I'm going to keep the rest of these as spares. So if nothing else, this kit is worth it for them clips. Here again, we need to make sure that our valve in plug is out against. Let's just pull it out. Since I can't push it out, all right, we're good. The longer this stuff sits out here, the more likely it's going to be that it gets displaced out of its place and things are going to get messed up. This end plug is in that way. This clip is in that way. New valve and spring. I didn't put no grease on that one. Give it a little twist. This one was in that way. There are several different of these valves, so make sure you get the right cap for what you got. I guess I ought to put the spring in there. Actually, we need to change this cap. This one here you got to push in and this little tip is going to sit on that hole. This one is sitting in this way. This one was tight fitting too. 
when I was sitting in this way. Little tips facing out. solenoids there's a little cutout right here this little tip sits right in I'm sorry this little tip faces up Seven torques. found it helps. Got a little screw fits on the end of here. Not sure what the threads are. I think it tells you in the instructions. with the split open and down and it's fitting in the groove right there back in it doesn't matter which way these go in 
on the old ones. four of those plugs and they go on the floor down here. killer on the back trying to keep this over here. Yeah, I screwed up again.
upside down. This one goes down here. valve is going to go in. This little clip is going to pop in. This little tab is going to be facing this way.
All right. Direct clutch. two seals here are pretty close to each other. So we'll find the one that fits on here best. And yeah, we'll put the other one on here. on the situation. Alright, we got the snap ring that's going to go down in here. See the taper of our tips of our snap ring that's going to face up. goes in the bottom groove down there. Actually, there's only one groove. Then our uh, cushion plate, I mean our bevel plate, and we get the new one. It's going to fit in here just like so. So we got to wait on the new one to show up, but when it does, it's going to go there. Then this uh, little plate's going to go on top with this notched end facing up. And our snap ring is going to go in with the taper of our tips up again. And it's going to sit in there just like so. And it'll sit down on that groove. So we're just going to leave that in here so it don't get lost. And then we got our cushion plate. I guess we'll go ahead and measure all this. 36 thousandths. Our steels. Are 83 and then we got clutches these are 86 thousandths these are 62 60 and these are 66 so we're going with the thick clutches right now so I guess I need that for my pressure plate plate goes with the tips up. It's 154 thousandths. Snap ring 131 thousandths. We got two ceiling rings back here. going to sit that right down the center of that make sure it goes that way don't spread these out too far you can break the back of them and not even know it and then it's not going to seal properly 
So spread it out just enough just to, to get into the snap ring groove. I mean the cylinder ring groove. And we got this bearing here. It goes on the back. reverse back here Upside down. A Belvo plate. It's going to sit on top. This is going to sit right here. Oh, actually, this goes this way. Let me go get my two half moon clips. going to sit in this groove right here and we want them just like that just like that
intermediate clutch bevel plate fingers up it's gonna sit down on top there Bring a little snap ring and go with the taper up make sure we're all the way in that groove and that we're sitting down in that recess Just don't look right. Yeah, right, there we go. Just wasn't sitting in there quite right. All right, our cushion plate is 43. Steels 117. We are going with the thick clutches again. Pressure plate 152, our snap ring 140, and this bearing is going to pop down. Sorry, wrong side. This bearing is going to pop down right there. All right, this drum we're not going to be able to put all the way together either because we don't have the bushing kit yet i had bushings for everything except for this drum so <clears throat> we can put the clutches in but we just can't assemble everything This one's got a D type of ring. This is just an O ring. sure that lips all the way up in there all right bevel plate fingers up a D style ring on this one also. Okay, well we gotta line this up so that the planet fits on these fingers and in these deals here, that's why I mark on my piston before I take it out where there's a we're sitting and you can figure it out eventually but it takes a while All right, taper of our tips up again uh, you can put that one in with your fingers otherwise you need a pair of snap ring pliers like that to fit you know, right down in those holes alright now we got the thin clutches uh, 49 thousandths on our cushion plate, 119 thousandths on our steels, pressure 
pressure plates, 117, snap ring, 115. Alright, that's all we can do with that drum until our bushings show up. Do this drum. our overdrive drum. Here again these two O-rings that are left pretty close in size to each other. I'm going to find the one that fits in here without being too loose. Bell plate with the fingers down. I usually try to find the groove where it's sitting before. It kind of wears a little groove in there. And then this o ring on the outside. And we got this ring that sits on top. We want the this side facing up, our snap ring is going to fit down inside of here, and we want to taper up. All right, cushion plate 33, steels 118. Pressure plate with the little um, tips up. 116. Snap ring. 101. We got our bearing here. Our ceiling rings here. Now, I forgot to mention on that snap ring, make sure that the opening of your snap ring is not in one of these grooves right here. Alright, we want the opening of our ceiling ring to be like that. Here again, be careful opening these ceiling rings up. You don't want to break the back of them. Alright, let's see. bearing on the back here. We got the race and sit in the bottom of this planet. The uh, bearing sitting on the back of the sun gear with the taper of uh, this up. Another bearing here. I'm going to put this in now because it's kind of 
tough fitting down in there and don't normally take all this stuff out. I just took it out to show you what was in there. Our gear here goes on the back and then sits on top. here faces inside usually you can push this in by hand if not I'll, I'll take it over here to the arbor press but I just grease it up a little bit and usually it just pushes in by hand This one's got a bearing that goes in here, so you need to make sure it's in good shape. But the ones that have a bushing, especially like on your 6R60s, 6R80s, uh, that bushing is not going to come in the kit. I've only had a couple that it did come in there. You have to order that bushing separate if you want it. Seems kind of strange, seeing as it's uh, probably the one of the most important bushings there is in there, next to the uh, bushing in the back of the stator. Make sure our lines are going the same way. Put a little bit of 3M weather strip adhesive on it. Press this in. Put our O ring on. Pump gears in, dots up, little dot right there, and then there's a dot here, recess down. Put us a little line up bolt in. This of the pump on. this piece of our pump on. Put our pump stator on. This bushing is critical. You must replace that bushing no matter what. If you don't, this unit will not work right. All right let me get my bearings here. Only line up one way. Get myself situated, and I'm going to go press this in on the arbor press. Yeah, 
and put me another lineup pin in just to get it pretty much straight. All right. All right. Got short ones and long ones, 27 torques. Two ceiling rings here. And there's two different size ceiling rings for this one. So you're going to have the small ones and the large ones. Make sure if you swap any of that stuff out that you match you know the pump and the drum up. Let's see here on oh, my shim. We got this shim goes on the front. You can actually drop this down on top of the sun gear for the that goes in this drum here. I always just stick it on here. All right. I guess we can stuff this, most of this in the case, not all of it. We got these two uh, lugs that sit on this center support. change camera angles and we'll get after it. All right, we got a ring gear. We got the shim that goes on the back here. Bearing race sits down on the bottom. All 
our planet assembly. Make sure that our bearings on the back. Clutch pack or pressure plate goes down first. It's 106 thousandths. We got thin clutches again. Our steels are 82, and our cushion plate on top is 55. And all these parts between the Volkswagen, the BMW, and the Ford, they're all different. So don't try to swap that stuff out. Make sure and match exactly what you have. And that's what you got to go back with. The cushion plate on top. We're going to put this notched in down at the bottom. All right, your center support, make sure our bearings in the bottom. These feed holes are gonna face six o'clock. Make sure our lugs are in. We're gonna have to go in pretty straight. You start getting cocked off to the side and it's gonna get stuck. So don't try to force it in. You're gonna end up getting it stuck in, in the case and then not be able to do anything. If you need to turn your planetary, you're gonna have to pull your, on this particular one, you're gonna have to pull your park rod because it's gonna stay in park spring loaded. All right, our snap ring has a bevel on both sides on this one. The opening is at the 11.30. Most of your Fords are over here at the uh, three o'clock. Make sure we're all the way up in the groove. There's a race that goes on top. You want to set it down just like that. Normally we would set our drum in right now. But we can't do that because we don't have the rest of our parts. I'm going to flip this over. The shim goes on the back here. <clears throat> you notice we got a really thin lip that holds that spring on. I'm gonna put a little bit of quick melting grease on the back back here. 
I use the gold because it melts really quick. It's just going to help keep that spring from popping off of there. And it don't take much. And you push it in by hand, usually. All right, we got our seal that we put in the back of the output shaft, I mean the flange. Sit on top. You can stake this in. I always put uh, red Loctite on here. It's got a spot right there where you can stake it. I'm going to tighten that down. It's, uh, camera's in the way. I want to show you this over here. And then I'm going to shut the camera off till our parts get here. But around the case, there's all these little plugs. This one back here just happens to be six millimeter. There's different size ones. But on the back side here, there's a seal. Some of your kits will come with the whole plug. That makes it easy. You can just uh, change out the plugs, but that's what these seals are. Just dig that out, stick that back in there, and do that on all the plugs that are on the outside. This is an uh, inch and inch and five sixteenths, I believe. Yeah, inch and five sixteenths. So it's about all we can do until our rest of our parts show up. We're gonna have to make this quick. Getting low on memory card and low on battery. So, ream this out with the reamer that they give you. you put the spacer down in the bottom of the bore. You put the reamer on the guide for this side. Shove this all the way up in the bore. And then you ream it all the way down to this spacer. Then on the other valve, you switch guides and put the reamer in this way, put it in this bore up here, and you bore it all the way down to the bottom of the bore right here. So this is our valve, new valve and spring for in here. And our other 
valve has a new valve and spring. Use the same end plug. And put our clip back in. Back on. Get everything all lined up here. We've got to line our manual valve back up inside the neutral switch. Get this. There we go. Got to go down kind of even. It gets hung up if you don't. All right. We put our wiring harness around here. This uh. No, this isn't the one. One of them has a little clip that you've got to clip onto there. It's not this one. I'm going to have to turn that a little bit. And go ahead and get this bolted down. Get my manual valve down in there. There we go. All right, our long bolts go all the way through and hold on the conductor plate. And the short bolts go everywhere else. going to show you me tightening this down. There's no need fixing to run out of battery. I want to show this before I run out. Um, got my bushings into here. I need to plant it here. Me. Our bearings up inside there. I mean, our, our race, and then our bearings on the here. Make sure our clips in there. We're gonna line that up, and looks like we're gonna have this side right here. That's gonna clip back down into place. We've got our drum with our bearing in here. Uh, 
this bearing with the cap down our hub make sure our bearings up inside there or no race here And then we got these little cutout right here. This little tip goes into there. And our snap ring is going to go on right there. And then this one's going to clip in. Let's see. Yeah, I got that right. That one's going to clip in over there. All right, until our bevel spring shows up, it's about all we can do on this unit. No telling when that's gonna happen. All right, so, we got our bearing in the back, got our race down there. Our bearing here on this one uh, when you're driving this bushing out be careful there's a sleeve that's down inside there you want to try to find the split on this bushing and drive it there and it tends to go ahead and split the bushing and it'll come out and go past that sleeve and not screw it up if you do it the other way you're more likely going to screw that sleeve up uh, and you had to push it in far enough that this bearing will sit down flat but you don't want to go too far because there's a, a feed hole that's underneath there so it's just enough to get that bearing to where it goes it sits down on there then our drum assembly I think we're all the way down. And we're pump, make sure that our uh, spacer is on there. You're gonna have to turn this pump enough to get it to spline into the planet. Okay. drum is all the way down. Sure sounds like it is.
be very careful here that we don't break a ring. Usually not this tough, but we got it on camera, so it's going to be a tough one. bushing and uh, the drum the bushings in the drum are not wanting to go onto the stator so I got it to where it's splining down now so we have got our pump bolts got the pump washers on them 27 torques short 27 torques it goes right here and we're going to use the speed handle to take this down we won't be able to feel if the rings break you know we want to take it down fairly even down see if our drum turns and it does so we're good there up on its back all right hopefully we got a good enough view of all this got these four seals that go down in here long one goes here the next the longest one goes here and then the, these two are the same just want to lube them up a little bit makes them slide in easier
You got the seals on both sides of this plastic piece. The long stepped end is going to face down on the pump. This is where it gets a little bit fun because the, the uh, annual valve's got to sit down inside of that and it's spring loaded and it can be a little bit fun to get all that in there. I'm going to go ahead and change my lever seal so I can put my bracket back on there. And I just get a pocket screwdriver and uh, dig the lever seal out. This end faces in. Just lube it up really good. You gotta make sure that the inner part gets over the square lugs on the uh, linkage. And then it just pretty much pushes in. I get a socket that fits in where the seal goes and drive it back just a little bit. on the right way 13 millimeter on the nut move that back now let's see Get just move back down a little bit this piece right here is going to have to hook in right there torques on these valve body bolts. The short ones go down here in the bottom. You want to tighten those up last. pass-through connector you see there's a little blade right there it's only going to line up one way so you just turn it till you feel it line up and then push it in go ahead and lube it up once 
once it's all the way in, in this will be able to push down and kind of releases it. There we go. filter pan. Oh, go ahead and go ahead and lube up the o-ring on that. It's 40 torques on the pan. I'm gonna work from the center out both ways and we're going to probably do a couple passes on it let it sit for a while come back and do another pass on it and let that set in really nice and good make sure we're all the way down and compressed and uh, other than that I don't think we got anything else to talk about on this one. Um, some you need to save your O-rings off of your cooler lines. A lot of times these kits they're not giving them, so make sure that they're in good shape. If need be, you're going to have to go to the dealership and get some or find some that that fit. These that come in the kit right here are for the Ford. And uh, like I said, most of the times they don't come with the O rings. So we'll just do a couple passes on those. Let them sit for about 30 minutes between each pass. And then uh, once we're sure they're down all the way, that'll be it for this one.